Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, aka ALS, is known as a motor neuron disease, and it is a rare condition caused by the degeneration of nerve cells that control voluntary muscles. The disease is characterized by gradually worsening symptoms that include muscle weakness, muscle twitching, and muscle stiffness. And as a result of this, the muscle gradually decreases in size, and this results in problems with speaking, swallowing, and breathing. Now, although there is no known cure for ALS, the primary drug that is currently in use is Riluzol. Now, Riluzol works to control and slow the progression of ALS. However, it is very expensive and it appears to be modestly effective. Other common medications that are prescribed also include drugs such as diazepam, which help control muscle spasticity, or gabapentin, which help to control pain. Now, when we're looking in regards to physical therapy and rehabilitation, the uses of appliances such as braces or wheelchair can help to improve your general health. But in those with severe cases who develop difficulty speaking, they may benefit from speech therapy, as well as synthesizers or computer-based communication systems. Uh, although these treatments are somewhat helpful, drugs like Reluzol, pain medications, or even wheelchairs, these only serve as a temporary solution. And based on the current status of this treatment, as you can see, something more is clearly needed. And that's what brings us to the main topic of this video, which is the clinical trials that are occurring on ALS. In recent years, there have been several breakthroughs that have been established from clinical testing. Now, among many of the developments, stem cell research and gene therapies have risen to the top of this field, having shown promising results. Now, before we address stem cell therapy, it is important to understand what are stem cells. Well, stem cells have the remarkable potential to develop into many different cell types in the body. And this is especially useful for when the body needs to grow or repair itself. Now stem cell therapy is emerging as a potential approach for treatment of ALS because of this. The logic behind using stem cells in patients with ALS involves replenishing cells in a certain part of the body that have been affected by the progression of ALS. Now to see whether this held true, a clinical control study was conducted by Dimas et al. and examined the therapeutic effects of using a neural stem cell and the drug Idarovone. These neural stem cells were injected into the spinal cords of patients with ALS that suffered significant motor neuron deterioration. And this deterioration affected the patient's abilities to move their entire bodies. But the results showed that the injection of these stem cells performed significantly better than the typically used Reluzol. Additionally, most patients' abilities to move improved despite there being minor decline post-treatment. The treatment helped patients reverse the progression of the disease and clearly helped to prolong their life and improve their life quality. Another promising topic being implemented in clinical trials is the use of gene therapy. Gene therapy is based on delivering a healthy copy of genes that are malfunctioning in a patient. The logic here is that by introducing these healthy genes, this may improve or even reverse the damage caused by the disease, in this case ALS. To test this, a study evaluated the therapeutic effects of cultured bone marrow cells secreting glial cell-derived neurotrophic factor. In healthy bodies, this neurotrophic factor helps keep nerve cells alive and function correctly. In patients with ALS, they were found to have very low levels of this factor and hence had less functioning nerve cells. A study enrolled 200 participants and was completed in April 2018. It involved administering the treatment known as Neurone into ALS patients. Neurone is derived from healthy bone marrow cells that secrete neurotrophic factors, and this was injected into the spinal fluid of these patients. The results demonstrated that the treatment in both cases was safe and well tolerated. Additionally, the injections resulted in a decreased rate of ALS progression during the six months after the injections. This shows the positive side of research breakthroughs and that we can all appreciate. In fact, there are several other clinical trials being conducted on humans and animals achieving similar things. However, throughout the years, there have been some obstacles that clinical trials on ALS have faced, and one of the largest issues is that there is a large amount of missing data for quantitative measurements. As ALS progresses in patients, they are less likely to undergo testing because visiting the study center becomes too difficult, and the tests themselves become increasingly laborious and tiring, and this reduces the study power of trials. Although there are no cures for a disease as complex as ALS, clinical trials are vital to changing that. Despite the drawbacks from clinical trials, 
every clinical trial, successful or not, gives us more knowledge regarding ALS, and overall brings us one step closer to finding the cure for ALS and other diseases like ALS for the future.